Hey, Danny. Hey, Professor Tran. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, getting into the, you know, the, the the whole student thing again after this whole break. I know, right? It's uh, it's kind of been a warm up week for for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll give myself like two weeks before I get back to it. That sounds about right. Oh, Professor, I have a quick question. Yep. Mm -hmm. I know that I emailed you about your uh, elective class, like, uh, and I think you said you were planning to do it in spring. I wasn't sure if you were still going to. The uh, the blood flow one? Yes, yes. So I taught that last spring, um, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure if it's going to be offered again this, this upcoming spring because it, it was a special course. And usually I think the policy with the special course is that they offer it every other year uh, before it becomes like a real course. It's it's a really niche, it's a really niche uh, course. And it's, uh, and so I think every semester they can only offer so many special courses and so many niche courses. And so it's, uh, and so they put those kind of on rotation. And so I think probably the next time will be um, not next spring, but probably the spring after that. <laughs> oh, okay. Most likely. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I, I am teaching a bio course this semester, although it's, it's not fluids related. It's, uh, it's just um, biomechanics in, in general. Um, Does this count for an elective class? Yes, yes, it'll count for an elective class. What, what do you mean by biomechanics? It's uh, human emotion. And so we're basically going to be uh, talking about how the human body moves. I talk about bone, like the properties of bones and muscles and um, and then, you know, I, I kind of want to steer it towards kind of an engineering kind of flavor. And so, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about like, you know, how do you design devices that interact with the human body? Um, and how do you, how do you support, um, support motion and support like performance and things like that? Right. Okay. And this would be in spring, I, I believe. Is no, it's, this, it's, uh, it's this semester. And so that's, uh, it's going on right now, actually. Oh, um, yeah. can I, oh, can I join that? It's cause like, I, I didn't know you were teaching any electives. So I just chose whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can join. It's. Uh, I think there's some open seats. Um, it, it is. It is an in-person class, and so I did request for it to be in person, just because you know it's human body stuff, and so it'll it'll help for everyone to be in the classroom. Um, and so I think I think that's kind of you know made some people a little bit wary of it, and so it's. Um, yeah, there's still there's still quite a few open seats in it. Um, uh, do you have the number of that class? Yes, it's a uh, four forty one. Four forty. Uh, how many days a week do we meet up in person? It's twice a week. And so it's Monday, Monday and Wednesday. Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll think about it. Mm -hmm.
Hey, Samson. Yeah, so this is this is um, kind of to be the more standard way I, I give lectures, and so I, I like to write notes on the on the iPad. Um, yeah, just to uh, I th I think you know I I'm I'm a big fan of writing notes on the on the whiteboard. Um, I think it's just you know it's a little bit more dynamic, and I think it it just kind of naturally slows me down, so it kind of gives you guys time to write stuff down too. Um, and I think it's just a lot more active than just talking over a a PowerPoint. Yeah, I agree. Uh, professor yep. what's up for uh number two on the learning objectives i mm -hmm. think there's a notification that's blocking ah. the word mm -hmm. oh okay there we go thank you it's cash yeah, should be a C. Mm -hmm.
How are you feeling, Professor Tran? I feel better. Yeah, actually, actually, just one hour ago, I got my my test results back, and I'm I'm negative, and so I'm 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 good to go. Good to hear. Yeah. So I guess it was just a cold or or something, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a relief. Yeah, because I, I. So what's gonna happen for four ten then? Yeah, so four ten, we'll we'll say virtual today, just because I I had already kind of you know um set planned that. ahead. Yeah, but uh, but starting cool. next week, we'll we'll be in person. So we'll we'll talk about it today in, in class. Oh, cool. That's so. All right, it's uh, one o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started today. All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Good, how are you? Good afternoon. Good, good. Yeah, thumbs up too, great, great. So it's uh, Thursday, so we're almost at the end of the uh, of the first week. And so, you know, I was talking to some people before the lecture, it's, you know, first week is always kind of uh, kind of like a warm up week because, you know, we're getting, getting back from a long summer break and uh, we're getting back in the swing of things. So, you know, hopefully you guys are getting back into it and, and things are going uh, things are going well. Uh, okay, and so today, um, you know, first thing you'll probably notice, I have, uh, I have my iPad out, okay? And so this will be the usual form of how I conduct the, the lectures, right? Uh, and so I'm, I'm usually a big fan of, uh, of, uh, of writing stuff on the board um, as opposed to lecture slides, because, you know, I, I feel like writing, kind of writing some, writing the notes in real time, I think kind of just, it kind of naturally just kind of sets the base um, because I know you guys are writing stuff down at the same time too. And so I think what I, what, what, what I tend to do with lecture slides is I, I tend to go too fast or I kind of talk too much, but you know, with the, with the writing down, I think it kind of keeps, it kind of keeps everything kind of under control. Um, and, it, and it's a little bit more dynamic too, because you kind of see the, um, the knowledge kind of, or the notes kind of appearing in real time in front of you. So, uh, and so I, I, I like that. And so, um, you know, I'm going to be using this, um, but I will say that, you know, my writing, my handwriting on the iPad is, is not that great. And so, you know, if there's ever, if there's ever a point where you're not sure, you know, what I wrote down, if, uh, you know, if the word's just unclear or my just handwriting just sucks, you know, just, you know, just let me know. So you can just stop me anytime and say, you know, what does that mean? Or what did you mean to write there? Um, and I'm always happy to, uh, to stop and clarify stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so today we're going to be starting kind of the real content of the class. And so we're going to um, have a kind of a really basic introduction to economics today. Okay. And so we'll be talking about things like costs and benefits um, and interest rates. Um, and we'll introduce a, a tool called the cash flow diagram, which I think is a, is a really useful tool for, uh, for helping you budget on, um, on stuff. Okay. Uh, but before I do that, um, I do want to take a quick tour of the course website just to kind of show you where everything is. Um, just so that you know you're not really guessing and you kind of know uh, you know how it works. Um, I, sh I should have done it last time. We actually had some time after the class to to do that, but you know I just thought the the uh, the activity would take the whole time. So uh, I'll probably spend the first ten minutes today going over the course website, um, and then we'll jump into the notes. Right. Uh, so before we begin, are there are there any questions I can answer um, just based on anything we did before or the class in general? 
Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and switch over to my um, laptop screen. Okay. Okay. Oops, that's Reddit. That's not. That's not the course website. This is the course website. Okay. All right. And so here is the course website. And so if you go log on to Canvas and then you go um, over to our class, you know, this is the home page that you'll see. Okay. And so um, you know, here we have the title of the class. Here's my name. Here is the uh, um, you know, here's my email address in case you forget. Okay. You can click on my name. If you click on my name, it'll show up kind of like my, you know, weird Tinder profile for teaching. If you, if, you know, if you want to look at that. Okay. Uh, here are the class times. And of course, everyone knows that because they're all here, but you know, in case you ever forget, it's there as well. Right. Uh, here, I have a just, just a brief description of the course that I wrote up. Here are the course level learning objectives we talked about last time. Um, here is the syllabus. And so if you click this, you can download the syllabus. Uh, and here are all the Zoom links. And so, you know, I, I think probably, you know, everyone's figured this out because they've, you know, all 44 of you are in the lecture. Okay. Uh, and here's the link to the Discord server. And so actually a lot of people have joined the Discord server. And so I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, but if you want to join or, you know, if you're interested in joining, all you have to do is just, all you have to do is just click this link. Um, and then, you know, if you have a Discord account, it'll automatically link it to, uh, to that. Okay. All right, and so um, you know probably where you're going to spend most of your time on the course website is down here. Okay, and so at the bottom you can see I have a table which I've called the course outline, and so here I've broken down the the semester into each of the sixteen different weeks. Okay, and then as the semester goes along, each of these links will become clickable. Right, and so let's take a look at week one, which I've already kind of established um, already. Okay, and so here. Uh, when you click when you click on a link for a certain week, you'll you'll be able to see a, a, a brief description of what we're going to cover that week, um, all the learning objectives that we're going to go over that week. Right? Uh, you'll see all the lecture recordings here, and so um, you know since we are in the virtual modality, uh, you know all the lectures are automatically recorded on Zoom. And then if you click this link, it's going to take you to YouTube, where it can where you can view the uh, um, the Things for the lectures. Okay. And so if you want to go back and watch a lecture, or if you can't make it to a lecture and you want to view the recording, you know, I think the best way to view it is from this weekly viewer. Okay. Um, oh, and just another note for the uh, for the recordings, um, you know, this is the second time I've taught this class um, virtually. And so actually, if you go to my profile, you should be able to see a playlist with uh, um, with all of the lectures from before. So actually, let me go with this one. Yes. Okay, and so these are my messy, messy ass hair. But then uh, these are all the these are all the lecture recordings from last year when I taught this. Okay, and so um, my plan is to kind of follow the same pace. Um, but you know, if for some reason you want to watch the last year's lectures, they're they're available here for you as well. Okay. Um, all right. Another thing on the weekly viewer is that you'll see all of the assignments that I posted for the week. And so right now you just have one homework, which is just the introduction, right? Um, and then you also see all the files as well. Okay. Um, and so, you know, these, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm always going to post my lecture notes ahead of time. And so whatever lecture notes we'll cover for the week, I'll put here. Okay. And so you can see that we're covering lecture note zero one, which is going to be these lecture notes, which we'll start covering in just a little bit. Okay. Uh, and if you want to download them ahead of time and, and look and take a look, then it's, it's there for you. Okay. All right. Um, and so that's the weekly viewer. And so I think that's, that's where you'll spend most of your time. Uh, but there's other tabs here that are available and so you can see here we have one tab for announcements and so if you want to look back at all the announcements that we've uh, we've had before you can check it out here okay we have another tab for assignments and so this is a summary of all the homework assignments um, that we'll have for the, for the course uh, since we're completely virtual too then we'll also have the exams which you'll, you'll which you'll be able to access here as well okay here you have your grades and so it, it, you can uh, see a breakdown of um, all the different scores that you've gotten on your on your different assignments here is the people link where you can look at, you know, everyone else that's in the class. Okay. And then lastly, you can um, check the files here. And so in the files tab, you'll be able to see, um, you know, all the files that I've uploaded here. All right. Um, so all of these files will be available on the weekly viewer. And so if you go on, you know, the specific week, you know, all the files are organized by, you know, which week that we're going to use them. Uh, but if you're just looking for a specific file, like maybe just a homework document, or maybe you're looking for a specific set of lecture notes, uh, you can come to this files tab here and then the files will be available here um, as well okay all right and so that's the and so that's a quick tour of the course website and so you know i wanted to make sure i do that just so that you guys know kind of how i've organized things here and, and nothing and nothing gets lost on the website okay uh, are there any questions on the on the course website
Okay. All right. Um, oh, chat. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go stop sharing it. I'm gonna go back to my uh, go back to my iPad, and then we'll start the, the lecture notes for today. Okay, and so uh, and so today we're going to be doing our first uh, lecture notes on, um, you know, um, just the the whole concept of you know just basically defining what are costs and benefits and how do they interact with each other on a um, in an engineering project. Okay, all right, and so just like we discussed on uh, Tuesday, um, you know, um, this class is going to be a little bit different from you know all your other classes, right? And so typically, you know, when you take an engineering class, when you take a computer science class. Um, you're you're interested in learning a lot of the technical details, right? And so you're interested in, in um, you know, um, how does a structure work, right? How do you compute the stresses inside a structure? Um, or if you're in computer science, you know, how do you write this code for this certain kind of algorithm, okay? And so in this, this class is different in that we're not going to be looking at technical details uh, really at all, okay? And so we're going to be looking more on, we're going to be focusing a lot more on all of the decision making and research management that goes into engineering products. Okay. Okay. Because as you guys saw on, on Tuesday when we did the activity, you know, these are real concerns, right? Um, engineering parts are, are usually a, a finite resource and, um, you know, raw materials are a finite resource and, you know, getting them at appropriate prices and making sure that you're within budget of your engineering project are real concerns. You need to be able to be able to do these in order to succeed um, uh, professionally. Okay. Um, and a lot of times, you know, these, these, um, these details actually matter a lot more to your engineering projects than the actual technical details. Right. Um, and so, you know, it, you'll, it's very rare for you to come to a, 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 a professional situation and kind of have carte blanche where, you know, you can use whatever resources that you can, right? You're always going to have some constraints of, of some kind, whether it be time, whether it be money, whether it be, you know, the scarcity of the resources, right? There's always going to be some kind of resource that you have to manage in addition to, you know, just figuring out the engineering details of it, okay? Um, and so this class is, is going to give you an introduction on how to, to do that. Okay. Right. And so let's, let's start kind of very um, basic. And so let's, let's kind of just introduce some concepts of money, interest rates and equivalents. Okay. So let's start with just some basic definitions. Right? And so let's start with the concept of a cost. Okay. Okay. So pretty straightforward. I think everyone understands uh, costs. Okay. Uh, but the definition that we're going to give it for this class is that a cost is a money that's paid out from you um, and it's represented as a loss of money. Okay. Uh, and so usually, you know, you're going to incur a cost in your engineering project when you're purchasing something new, when you're making an investment, when you're paying people, paying staff, uh, performing maintenance, um, you know, or, um, you know, or anything else. Okay, so there's a lot of costs that are used that are associated with engineering projects. Okay, uh, and so there's a lot of costs that are associated with engineering projects, and we'll and we'll go deeper into you know how we can classify these costs and, and you know how these costs gets distributed over time. Okay, all right, and so that's costs, 
And, those, and so the second definition that we'll go over is a benefit. Okay, so the benefit is, is an opposite of a cost. And so a benefit that comes into you, okay? And it's represented as a uh, as a gain in money. Okay. Um, and so, ways that benefits occur for an engineering project usually these occur through sales. Okay. Uh, and so you've, if you sell your product, then of course you're, you're going to make money. Okay. Um, it's uh, um, another, another way can come into you is, is, is if you're, uh, if you're cashing out an investment. Okay. Okay. Um, it, it, seem, it seems like in the past year that I've, I've taught this, you know, everyone's super into crypto now. And so a lot of people are very, um, and of course, you know, the whole GameStop and uh, AMC thing happened too. So a lot of, I think a lot more people are, are in more investment minded than they were before. So um, kind of the, the context around this class, I think is a lot different, but you know, that's another way that you can, you can gain money as well. Okay. Uh, and companies are always investing stuff too. And so we'll, we'll actually talk a lot about this. And so, you know, a lot of the money that they, that they have, you know, a lot of it's actually invest in, in other markets too. And it's, uh, you know, it's just part of the, uh, the business. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, most, for most of this class, you know, we'll be talking about benefits in terms of strictly just money, uh, but benefits can actually be used to describe other um, non-economic positive effects of an engine of an engineering project as well. Okay. And so some examples of this could be like a, maybe a benefit to the environment. Maybe your project is uh, making the environment cleaner or making or cleaning up the air a little bit, okay? Uh, or maybe another benefit is to, you know, improve the quality of life of, uh, of, of humans or, or people in a society, okay? And so one common example of this is a lot of government projects are, are like that, okay? And so a lot of government or public works projects, they're often not, um, they're not intended to make money, right? And so, you know, the government pays, you know, construction workers to fix up the roads, right? And it's not that they're, it's not that they're charging people to use the roads, but an obvious benefit of this is that, you know, it makes, it makes driving them, driving on them a lot easier. Okay. Um, and so, you know, there's no, you know, when, when the government or, you know, when anyone or the city invests in uh, public works projects, you know, they're not expecting any money back, but they're expecting it to be a, a net gain of quality of life for their, uh, for their citizens. Okay. Uh, and another uh, another example of a non-economic benefit would be to um, advance the field of science and technology, right? Um, and so, if you do research and you research, you know, you do research into a new method or a new um, discovery, right? That's not going to make money right away, but you do you can kind of have a, a net positive benefit on society by, um, you know, making that new advancement. Okay. All right. Um, and so, in general, you know, uh, when you're when you're talking just strictly economics. For an engin engineering projects, you typically want to have more benefits than costs, right? And so that's kind of a, a, a straightforward thing. And so you don't you don't want to ever lose money. Okay. And so if your engineering project has um, a larger amount of benefits than costs, then what we say is that this project is profitable. Okay. Um, and that's generally, that's generally a good thing, unless you work in something specific, like maybe an R&D division, or maybe you work on a public, public works project. But um, typically most engineering companies want their projects to be profitable because you know, a company exists mostly to make to make money, right? Okay. Uh, any questions on um, on this? Okay. All right. 
Uh, and so let's let's break down costs a little bit because there's uh, there's a lot of different ways that um, you know costs can occur into a, an engineering project. Okay. And so there's there's actually you know the the textbook and the notes actually give you um, I give you a lot of um, different definitions for cost. Um, but I think it, it makes it a little bit complicated. And so I, I want to kind of break it down into kind of two, um, two different kinds of costs that, you, that you'll see most often. Okay. One is a recurring cost. Okay. And so recurring cost is a cost that um, happens at regular intervals. Okay. Okay. Um, and so this is uh, this is uh, a cost that you can expect basically every month or every year or something like that. Okay. And so some examples of recurring costs that might occur in your daily life is your um, is your rent, right? And so a, your rent is a recurring cost that you expect to pay at the beginning of every month. Okay. Your electrical bill, your internet bill, your phone bill, right? So all of these are examples of, of recurring costs. Yeah, maintenance on equipment, that's an excellent example. And so, you know, for, for a lot of the, a lot of the um, examples we do in this class, you know, any kind of calibration or maintenance on equipment, that's something that you have to perform regularly um, in order to maintain, you know, certain safety standards and certain other, other things. So, yeah, that's, that's probably one of the most common, um, you know, types of occurring engineering costs. And probably the other one that's more common is, uh, is just staff, right? And so paying your staff, you know, that's, that's a recurring cost. You have to pay every, you know, Either a couple of weeks or every month, depending on depending on the engagement. Okay. Okay. Some examples uh, for recurring costs: this could be like maintenance costs. Or salaries. Okay. okay. And then the other type of cost that I, I want to um, that I want to mention to you is a non-recurring cost. So kind of the the opposite of recurring costs. Right? Okay. And so a non-recurring cost. Um, these are costs that occur at e either irregular intervals or um, or one-time expense. Okay, and so some examples of this would be like the initial cost of a of a large purchase, a large purchase. Okay, okay, uh, and so if you buy a new piece of equipment, you know that that upfront cost that's that's only that something that you pay once. Okay, um, or another another type of non recurring cost that we'll go over later are. Uh, what I like to call overhaul costs or um, or uh, non regular maintenance. Okay. Okay. Um, and so you know, for a lot of engineering machines, um, you know, they'll they'll have their kind of regular maintenance costs that you have to maintain them. But every so often, you know, you, you probably have to take them offline and do a really thorough inspection of them, right? Uh, and so that would be an example of a non-recurring cost or like a major maintenance cost that that doesn't occur all the time, but you know it. Um, but it does. It is something that you have to do. Okay. Um, okay. So any uh, any questions on on this? Yeah. All right. So the question is, uh, what is overhaul cost? So an overhaul cost is like a a non a non-regular maintenance cost. Okay. And so as, as an example, you know, um, you know, actually, actually, my fiance just went to Disneyland just a, a week ago. 
Um, and then they had to, uh, Matterhorn was, was working miraculously. Uh, but if you, if you ever been to, uh, if you ever been to Disneyland a lot in the past, you know, that they take Matterhorn down for maintenance, um, kind of regularly. Right. And so, you know, probably what's happening behind the scenes is that, you know, every morning they have someone go and inspect Matterhorn, um, and do kind of the regular maintenance on it. But sometimes they have to do a major maintenance. Like maybe they have to replace the tracks or maybe they have to, you know, update all the carts. Uh, right. And so that's not something that they do on a regular basis, but only when, you know, maybe every, maybe every couple of years or something like that. Um, and so that's, that's, that's like an example of an overall cost. Yeah. We'll do a lot more examples of that because that's, that's, it is, it is something that's pretty common um, that you have to um, account for in engineering projects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Any, uh, any other questions on, on this? <clears throat> okay. All right, and so next thing I wanna go over is the concept of a cash flow diagram. Okay. All right. Um, and so, you know, if, if once you start budgeting for like a complex engineering project, you know, what you'll start to learn very quickly is that there's there's lots, there's so many different costs and benefits to keep track of. Okay. Um, and it, it becomes, you know, it becomes a non-trivial thing to uh, to organize all of these. Okay. And so a cash flow diagram is a tool that you can use uh, to basically organize all the costs and benefits um, of an engineering project over time. Okay. Um, and so, you know, you ha usually having a cash flow diagram is, is something that's really useful because you can look at it and you can really, you know, kind of very easily determine, you know, whether you're you're on budget or or not. Okay. And so let me let me draw you an example here. Okay. And so cash flow diagram, you know, it, it looks kind of just like a like a number line, right? And so you start out with a kind of a horizontal line like this. Okay. Um, leave yourself some room above and below the line because we're going to draw some arrows on it. Okay. Uh, and there's usually um, nodes or notches on this line, okay? And, and those are gonna notify, you know, the different, um, the different time periods, okay? And so a cash flow diagram will always start at time zero, okay? And it's gonna be numbered, um, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Um, an important thing to note is that, you know, the reason we start at time zero here is that this time zero, let me write it above actually, okay? Um, this time zero represents today, okay? Okay. And so a time, and so, you know, um, since time zero, it represents today, what the cash flow diagram does is it kind of represents uh, a, a prediction for the cash flows um, over the next, you know, few cycles, right? So a cash flow diagram is for predicting cash flows in the future. Okay. So that's important to note because, you know, if if you uh, um, and so, you know, a cash flow diagram is is mostly meant as a planning tool, right? And so it's for planning, it's for helping you plan kind of the forecast of the 
um, of your budget, you know, over the over the over the cycle of your project. Okay, it's not really meant as a as a retrospective tool, and so it's not really meant to look back and say, you know, this is how much money we spent. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of really good accounting tools for that, um, and I think we'll we'll cover a little bit of accounting kind of later on in the in the semester. Okay, um, but here's how it works, and so you know, um, on this uh, line right here. Um, basically, on this line, what you want to represent are the are the benefits and the costs. Okay. Okay. And so, the costs um, you're going to represent as a down arrow, right? Okay. Uh, and so, everything that you plan on paying out it can be represented as a down arrow. Okay. And you usually you write the amount that you're going to write down um, that you're going to um, you know of the cost right next to the arrow. Okay, and so you can see from this cash flow diagram that at time zero or today, you know we're going to incur a cost of a hundred dollars. And then every time period after that, you know, this might be months or might be years, right? And so one month from now, we're going to pay a thousand dollars. In two months, we're going to pay another thousand dollars. In three months, another thousand. Four months, five months, right? Okay. And so those are all the costs. And then the benefits are going to be represented as an up arrow. Okay. Okay. Okay, and so let's say for this uh, um, for this particular project, you know, we can expect to make three hundred dollars um, each month. Okay, right. And so with this cash flow diagram, you can you can kind of very clearly see you know how much money you're making on each month at each time period. Okay. All right. Uh, and so in this project, you know, it's 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 not doing so great because we're we're paying out a thousand dollars every month. But we're only making 300 back and so each month we're losing 700 bucks which is um you know which is not great it's uh, not not usually what you want to be doing uh, for these kinds of uh, for these kinds of things okay uh any questions on uh any questions on this so far okay all right and so uh let's talk about some of the um Kind of some of the the rules for a cash flow diagram right or i should say the standards All right, and so the first uh, standard is uh, uh, kind of what I mentioned before for time zero, okay? Okay, uh, so it's time zero, this represents the first stage of a project, okay? or represents the initial stage of the project. Okay. Um, and so, you know, just like I mentioned before, cash flow diagrams are used to plan for future projects. Okay. And so, time zero is kind of indicating the start of that project.
And so if we were to start that project today, you know, that's what time zero would, would represent, okay? And so usually, you know, the only thing that you're gonna have on time zero is you're gonna have the initial cost of the project. Okay. And so any kind of equipment, any kind of big equipment that you need to buy, you know, usually you're going to buy that on day on right on time zero, right, right at the beginning of the project. And so any kind of initial upfront costs are going to be um, represented on time zero. Okay. okay. Um, and, you know, for a lot of the examples that we're going to do, you know, they're going to be things like, you know, let's, let's say that, you know, this company is considering purchasing this new equipment, right? Or maybe it's like a new delivery truck, or maybe it's like a new, um, you know, a new um, pump, or maybe a new generator, right? Um, and so time zero, you're going to represent the initial cost of that purchase, right? And then over time, you're going to list out, you know, how much is it going to take to maintain this, um, maintain this object or maintain this piece of equipment? And how much money are we going to make from this piece of equipment too? Okay. And so time zero is, is, is basically when you say that, you know, how much, how much do we need to start this project? And then we put that on time zero. Okay. All right. And so that's the first standard that we have to um, that we have to account for. Okay. Um, so the, the other standard, and I think this is this is a very common question, is that um, you know, we're we're going to always assume that all other cash flows occur at the end. Of a period. Okay. okay. And so basically what the cash flow diagram represents is basically all of the costs and benefits that occur over that month or maybe over that year, you know, we're going to lump that together at the at the end. Okay. And so if you look back at, at the kind of the example that I drew here, you know, you'll notice that all of the arrows that I drew occur at the numbers, right? And so they occur at the node for one, at the node for two, at the node for three. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, if you, you know, uh, if you say that you know I, I uh, the maintenance guy comes in on the fifteenth every month, right? It doesn't matter, you know. And, and so you know we're not going to draw a uh, an arrow at the middle of the month or in the middle of a period like that, okay? Just because you know it, it's it's mostly just for organizational purposes, right? And so even even if it's a cost that you pay in the middle of the period, you know we're going to push that to the end just for um, you know just for organizational um, purposes, okay? Um, and that's you know that's just that's just to, that's just to keep the the diagram neat because if you start to add things kind of in the middle of the month then you know things start to get really really uh, really messy okay all right and so that one's really important and, and it's gonna it's gonna help us out with a lot of you know a lot of the calculations that we're gonna do in the future too okay all right and so two more rules just to uh, um, are these aren't really rules they're kind of already implied by the cash flow diagram. Uh, but we're going to say that any arrow that's pointing up, that's going to indicate a benefit. Okay. okay. Uh, and then any arrows pointing down, that's going to indicate a cost. Okay. All right. Uh, so any questions on, on this so far? Okay. All right. So now let's talk about um, different categories of cash flows or different types of cash flows that you'll see in a diagram. Okay. All right. 
And so the different um, and so the different costs and benefits that you put into a cash flow diagram, a lot of times they can be categorized into certain types of types of cash flows. Okay. All right. And so the first one that we'll go over is a initial cost. Okay. So we've kind of already talked about this already. Right. And so initial costs, these are these are costs that occur at time zero. Or in other words, costs that occur at the very beginning of a project. And usually these are um, expenses that are used to build, uh, build, uh, build a new infrastructure or to buy new equipment or to install something new, okay? Uh, and so most most projects you're going to have kind of a, an, an initial cost. Okay. All right. And so the next category of costs that occur are um, operating operation or maintenance costs. Okay. And so operation or maintenance costs, these are recurring costs that are needed to maintain um, all of the um, equipment or infrastructure in the project, okay? Okay. Um, and so salaries, this are, these are usually, you know, what goes in here. And so, you know, almost always you're going to have some kind of, um, of maintenance cost for your project. Okay. Uh, next, we have something called a salvage value. Okay. And so salvage values, these are, these are something that usually occur near the end of a project's life. Okay. And so this is a, a benefit. Okay. And usually this, uh, and usually this um, occurs, or the way that you get this is you you basically sell the equipment or you sell the infrastructure that you're using. Okay, and so let's say that you know you use a delivery truck. Your company uses it for you know maybe ten years, right? And at the end of those ten years, you know you're not you don't need it anymore, and you either sell the truck or you sell the parts of the truck to you know whichever, whoever wants it. Okay, and so you get some you get you know some money back for your um, you know for your investment. Okay, usually it's much lower than your initial cost. Because um, anyone who's driven knows that, you know, you drive a car for 10 years, you know, no one's going to buy the car, you know, for the same amount as, as you, as you, um, you know, as you bought it for, unless, you know, you renovate it and, you know, you, uh, you do a bunch of stuff to it, but usually you're going to sell it at a much, much, uh, a much discounted price. Okay. All right, and so that's the uh, and so that's the definition of salvage value. Okay. Next, we have revenue. Okay. 
And so revenue is uh, is basically benefits that that recur on, on a regular basis, okay? And these are the result of just a regular sale of your product or services, okay? Okay, uh, and so revenue is usually a, a regular thing. You know, if you're if you're working for a, a private company that's looking to make a profit. Okay, uh, and we have one more type of cash flow called an overhaul cost, but I'll, I'll save it for the next page because we're a little bit short on on space here. Okay, um, all right. So any any questions on on this so far? Okay. All right, and so the last type of cash flow that we'll consider is an overhaul cost. Okay. And so these are major expenses or major costs that um, occur um, sometimes once or maybe you know at a regular time, irregular times during a product's life. Okay, and so those are the five types of cash flows that you'll see most often in these in these kinds of problems. Okay, and so usually, you know, um, um, you know, at least for the homework, what I'm going to have you do is I'm I'm going to give you a, a situation, um, a typical kind of engineering project situation, and I want you to classify all the different cash flows in the problem, right? And so you're going to classify it as like an initial cost, a revenue, a maintenance cost, or whatever. Okay. And then you're going to draw the cash flow diagram for that. Okay, so let's do an example of, of one such problem, just so you can kind of, you know, just so you can kind of get a sense of you know, what 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 I what I generally expect from these. All right, and so in this example, let's consider the construction of a wind of a wind turbine uh, used for generating and selling energy to a local town. Okay, uh, and so um, I can attempt to draw it just to kind of give you a, a taste for what it is, okay? So let's say we have, we have wind coming this way and here's our wind turbine, okay? okay. And then the, uh, the wind is gonna cause the turbine to rotate, okay? And then from that, we're gonna be able to extract power. Power that we can collect and we can sell to um, to the locals. Okay. All right. And so let's uh, and so let's go, let's go ahead and describe this problem more. Okay. And so um, you know this is this is this is a project that the city is considering or maybe the power company is considering. Okay. And here's kind of the information that you have. Okay. And so the turbine itself is going to cost eighty thousand dollars to build. Okay. Um, uh, additionally, it's going to cost uh, nine thousand dollars a year to uh, to maintain. Okay, and that's to pay for you know maybe extra parts or to pay for the uh, the maintenance crew to go um, service it. Okay. Um, and so, um, 
it costs nine thousand dollars a year to maintain but you know over a six-year period it's expected to produce it is expected to produce about twenty four thousand um, dollars worth in revenue each year Okay, uh, that's what it's projected to do. Okay, all right. And then at the end of its life cycle, um, you know, the the city, you know, if they if they decide to tear the the turbine down, it's expected that they can sell the parts of the turbine for ten thousand okay. dollars. All right, and so for this problem, what I want you to do is I want you to identify all the cash flows um, for this problem. Right? I want you to draw a cash flow diagram, um, and then also I want you to draw a what's called a cash flow table, okay? Which is just a tabular representation of uh, um, of these um, of these expenses. Okay, so let me go ahead and write that down. Okay, so one, identify and label all cash flows, okay? Two, we're gonna draw a cash flow diagram. Okay. And then three, we're gonna do a cash flow table. Okay. Uh, so any questions on the um, on the on the setup for this problem or the uh, um, just the, the wording of the of the problem here. Okay. All right, so let's work on the let's work on the first part of the problem first so so we're going to take all of the cash flows here and then we're going to label them okay. All right, and so the way that I, I usually like to do this is that you know these these problems were all, will always come to you with some kind of word problem. And so, um, you know, if you're writing the word problem down or maybe you have it printed out, what I usually like to do is that whenever an amount of money is mentioned in the problem, I like to just circle it, right? And so first we have here 80,000 bucks, right? So let's go ahead and circle that. Right? Next, we have $9,000 per year. And so we're gonna go ahead and circle that, right? Uh, and then lastly, we have $24,000 uh, or third, we have $24,000 a year in, in revenue, okay? And then lastly, we have this $10,000, um, you know, uh, for what we can get at the end, okay? And so we have basically four cash flows in this problem um, that we've identified, um, and then now we're going to, and then now we're going to label them um, as in terms of, you know, what kinds of cash flows these guys are based on the categories that we had on the previous page, okay? Uh, okay, so any questions on, on this before we uh, before we label these guys? Okay. All right. So in part one of this problem, let's go ahead and identify and label all the cash flows. Okay, and so from those four, let's go ahead and write them down again. All right, so we have 80,000, we have 9,000, we have 24,000, and then we have 10,000. All right. And so $80,000, let's go back and look at what that $80,000 was, okay? And so the problem told us that it's gonna cost us $80,000 to just to build this turbine, okay? And so this is a cost that we're incurring at the very beginning of the project just to build it, okay? 
And so this $80,000 here is an initial cost. All right, so there's uh, so there's that one. Okay. Next, we have our nine thousand dollars. Okay, and so this nine thousand uh, dollars, what the problem told us is that it's going to cost us nine thousand dollars a year to maintain. Okay, uh, to pay the you know the the mechanics and pay for the extra parts. Okay, and so this nine thousand dollars here, this is a maintenance cost that occurs on a regular basis. Next, we have the twenty-four thousand dollars, right? And so the twenty-four thousand dollars—that's the amount of uh, of sales that's expected from this turbine, okay? And so this twenty-four thousand dollars is a revenue, right? And so that's a cash flow. That's that's a benefit that's going to um, occur to us every now and then, okay? Or every 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 year, right? Uh, and this ten thousand dollars—you know—what the problem says, you know, after this, after the six years that we use this turbine, that's how much we can sell the parts for. And so this $10,000 here is known as, that's a salvage value. Okay. All right. And so this one was, you know, pretty straightforward. You know, a lot of, you know, the problem itself used kind of this exact wording sometimes, especially uh, revenue and sales. Okay. Uh, but that's how you would do it. Right. And so, you know, when I, when I ask you to identify and label all the cash flows, I basically, want to, I basically want you to take all of the, you know, um, all the different, you know, times that you see cash in the problem and then label what kind of cash flow it is for that project. All right. And so that's all the cash flow. So now let's draw the cash flow diagram. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and draw our line. And one and one thing that you know the problem said that you know uh, we kind of looked over before was that this project is going to take place over six years. Okay, and so that tells us that you know in our cash flow diagram uh, we need to have six different um, time periods. Okay, uh, going from zero to six. Okay, make sure you always start at zero, right? So don't start at one. And so we go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. And so now that we have this cash flow diagram, we're ready to start uh, inputting these uh, these cash flows. Okay. And so let's start with the initial cost. Okay. So the initial cost I'm going to put in red right here. Okay. And so remember the initial cost always occurs at the at time zero. Okay. And so we're gonna have a down error of $80,000 there, okay? okay? Next, we have the maintenance costs and the maintenance costs I'm gonna put in orange, okay? All right, and so the maintenance cost is something that's going to occur every year, right? Um, and so starting on year one, that's what we're gonna put it on. Okay. And so every year, um, you know, starting on year one, we're going to have a maintenance cost of $9,000. Okay. Notice how I didn't put the maintenance cost on year zero, right? Because, you know, at years at, at, at time zero, you know, we, we, we just bought it. And so there's a, hopefully you don't need to maintain it because you just bought it new. Right. And so all maintenance costs and revenue too, you know, we're going to start that at year one. Okay. Um, so year zero is actually a very, it's a very unique place. And so the only thing that really occurs at year zero is just the initial cost. Okay. All right, so next let's go ahead and put the revenue in there. And so we have a revenue of $24,000 a year. And so once again, we're gonna start the revenue on year one, not on year zero.
Okay. All right. And so uh, that's all of our revenues. And so all you can see all of those are going up. Okay. <coughs> our question. Uh, so if we bought a used equipment that still needs calibration. Will we put the input? Will we input the maintenance costs, or will we just consider it at initial cost? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And so if, if you're buying a, a piece of used equipment uh, where you do need to kind of uh, fix it up um, a little bit at the beginning, I would lump that in together with the initial cost, right? And so you would kind of add that together as like you know this is we need to pay for both the equipment and also to kind of fix it up a little bit you know before we can start using it, okay? Um, and so, you know, time zero, that's kind of the, the genesis of your project. And so any, any upfront cost that you need to pay, whether it be to purchase the equipment or, you know, or even just to fix it up, all that should go in, in year zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the last one that we have here is the salvage value. Okay. And so the salvage value is something that we're going to pay, or that's going to, that's, that's going to give us money at the end of the project. Okay. And so we're going to just put an additional benefit there. And so we have an additional benefit of ten thousand dollars at the at the very end of the at the very end of the project. Okay. Um, and so what you can do for this last one is you can just draw one big arrow that says thirty four thousand, um, and, and I believe in the notes that's that's what I have. Um, or you can make it separate like this, just so that you know, uh, you know, you can kind of keep track of what's of what's different. Okay. Um, okay, and so that's the cash flow diagram. And so it's you know once you've once you've basically taken a problem and you've identified all of the um, all the different cash flows, um, drawing the cash flow diagram is actually pretty pretty straightforward from there. It's just kind of putting the arrows where they where they need to be. Okay. Um, all right, any any questions on on this? <clears throat> okay. All right, and so that's the cash flow diagram. And so now let's draw the cash flow table. Okay. Okay. And so the cash flow table has basically all of the same information as a cash flow diagram. Um, it just has it in tabular form. Okay. Uh, oh, question. So the question is, should the arrows have different magnitudes or lengths to represent the different costs? Yes. Actually, you know, ideally, what you should draw is that you know the the, the lengths of the arrows should represent the magnitude of of the um, um, of the costs, um, but um, I'm not very good at that, and so I'm using colors uh, instead. But uh, but ideally, yes, yeah, you should have a bigger arrow to represent, you know, a bigger cost or a bigger a bigger benefit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, question: Will you lose points for not being able to? No, of course not. No, if if I if I can't draw, you know, uh, things that are in scale, then I'm I wouldn't expect you guys to do it too. So as long as you label it and and I know, you know, uh, what values the arrows represent, that's that's all that matters to me. And actually, a lot of times it, it's it actually looks a little bit better if you don't draw it to scale, because if you look at this, you know, eighty thousand dollars is actually you know ten times bigger than nine thousand. So if I if I were to actually draw this to scale, you know, this eighty thousand dollars would actually go off go off the screen on the bottom, right? And you ba you barely be able to see the nine thousand. And so, um, and so you know, I I trust you guys to to you know um, to do what's most aesthetically pleasing for you. You know, as long as I can understand what you're writing down and you know what each of the arrows represent and what the values are, that's that's all that matters to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so a cash flow table um, has the same information as a cash flow diagram, it's just in tabular form. Okay. And so it looks something like this. And so this is this is I, you know, honestly, this is probably something that's probably more practical because this is something that you can just input into Excel really, really easily. Okay? Um, and so this cash flow table can be, you know, it can be as, as complicated as you want. Um, but, you know, kind of the simplest form of this is that you have one column for time. Okay. You have another column for costs. Okay. And you have a third column for benefits. Okay. So this is kind of the simplest form for the cash flow table that you can have. But of course, you can break down the cost between initial costs, maintenance costs. You know, salary and all that stuff, right? And same thing for the benefits. Uh, but this is kind of the simplest um, thing that you can do. And since we have six time periods here, or six years, uh, we're going to make the table go up to six. Okay. And then all you have to do is just write in, um, you know, write in all the values. Right? Actually, let me maintain the same color as I did before. Okay. Okay. 
And so initially, you know, we have a initial cost of 80,000. And so let's go ahead and put that in, okay? Uh, we don't have, we didn't occur any benefits yet. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the first row blank for benefits. Okay, and now I'm writing in all the maintenance costs. Okay. And so each year, you know, we, we pay maintenance costs of $9,000. And so that's what all of those represent. Okay. Next, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write in all the benefits. So let's start with all the revenues. And so there's all the revenues. And then finally, we have our salvage value, which we're gonna to add to the end of $10,000, okay? Right. And so the cash flow table is just, it has the exact same information as the cash flow diagram. It just has it in table instead, okay? It makes it a little bit easier to, to read, a little bit easier to, um, to write it too, okay? And of course, you know, when you have a uh, multiple cash flows that occur on the same, um, time period like this, you can just combine them. Instead of, so instead of doing 24,000 plus 10, you can just do just straight up 34,000. Okay. Um, and that makes it a little bit more clear. Okay. All right. Um, any questions on uh, any questions on this? Okay. All right. Uh, and so I, I kind of held off on, on showing the cash flow table kind of for this reason, because, you know, when you see a table like this, you know, I think the really tempting thing to do is to take everything in this column, add them all up, right, and to get like a total cost, and then take everything in this column and then add them up and to get a total amount of benefits, okay? And then if you add those two numbers together, if the, uh, if the benefits outweigh the costs, then we say, you know, hooray, you know, we're, our, our project is profitable, and we're going to make this amount of money. Okay, it's very tempting, but you know I'm going to argue with you that you know you can't simply do that. Okay, and the reason you can't do that, the reason you simply just can't add um, you know ac um, across this column right here, is that all of these different cash flows are taking place at different times. Okay. And then for this particular problem, each of these numbers here, they represent different years, okay? Okay, right? And the thing with money is that, you know, its value, the value of money is gonna change with time. Okay, it's not going to have the same amount of value, you know, today as it is for the future. Okay, and so nine thousand dollars today, eighty thousand dollars today is not going to mean the same thing as eighty thousand dollars in the future. Okay, and you know, usually when I first bring this point up, I think the first thing that everyone thinks about is inflation, right? Um, and so inflation is definitely, you know, it's definitely a thing. You know, I'm not saying it's not a thing. Um, you know, and we're and we're going to go over inflation later on in the semester. But I think there's an even more fundamental reason why, you know, the time value of uh, the value of money changes with time. Okay. And so I'm going to introduce the idea to you today, and then we're going to pick this up on Tuesday, just because we're, you know, we're a little bit out of time, you know, but I do want to do kind of one kind of um, theoretical um, solution before we do. All right, and so this is going to be, um, you know, this is going to launch into kind of, uh, you know, kind of a bigger, a pretty big topic called the time value of money. Okay. All right, and so, you know, to kind of illustrate this, let me give you a hypothetical situation. Okay. Let me say, let's consider, um, you know, and this, this is a lot better, you know, when we're in person because I can pull out my wallet and, and show you, right? And so let's say that um, I'm going to give you two options. Okay. Option one, right? Option one, I pull out a hundred dollar bill and I said, I can give you this hundred dollar bill right now. Okay. 
That's option one. I pull it out of my wallet, I give it to you, and you say, do what you want, okay? Spend it wisely. Okay. All right, option two. Option two is like, you know, I say, I have this $100 bill, I can keep it for you, and then I will give it to you in a year. And so which which one do, would you guys prefer? Would you guys prefer to have $100 right now or would you prefer to have $100 a year from now? Now, Jesus says now. What, what, what about you guys? What about everyone else? I'd say now. Now, okay, All right. Probably now. Now? And <laughs> now more, more um, give it now and more later. No, you can choose, only choose one or the other. Okay, so everyone's saying now, and and that is, and you know, this this wasn't a trick question. So this this was right, right? So obviously, you know, the uh, you know the uh, the preferable option here is to um, receive it now. Okay. 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 Um, and so, because if you receive it now, then what you can do is you can you can use it now, right? More importantly is that if I give you $100 now, what you can do is you can take that $100 and invest it, okay? Okay. And so what does that mean, right? Um, and so I, I think, you know, because of kind of recent events, I think people have a, a little better idea of, of investment. But um, the idea with investment is that you kind of take your money and you, you know, you put it somewhere, you pay someone else, right? Um, and then after a certain amount of time, you expect that money to grow, okay? Okay. And so let's say, you know, just for just for the sake of argument, you know, let's say that you took that hundred bucks and you invested it into a bank account or you invested it into some stocks with a 5% interest rate or a 5% rate of return. Right. And so if you, if you took that same hundred dollars, you invested it, um, you made 5% off of it. Then in a year from now, you're going to have a hundred five bucks. My pen turned off. Okay. Okay. Right. And so in a year from now, that same hundred dollars that I gave you, if, as long as you invested it right, it can grow to a higher amount of money. Right. And so if you compare option one and option two, you know, you can say that option one is worth, you know, five dollars more in a year than it is right now. OK. Right. And so the whole idea behind this and kind of the whole driving force is that, you know, whenever you have money and, and you're considering some length of time, you have to consider, you know, some ideas of interest rate. And the effect and the fact that you know money that you have today can actually change its value over time or can grow over time. Okay. 
Um, and this is a really important concept for engineering projects because uh, engineering projects, a lot of them take place, you know, over several years or several months, several years, right? Um, I'll give you an example. So, you know, one example that, um, you know, that, that occurred, you know, actually right before the pandemic was that our, um, our college, um, the, en the engineering school here at Cal State Fullerton, you know, we were thinking of having a, a major renovation in our buildings, right? We're thinking of, of uh, build, having, a, having a new building, kind of tearing down the old ones. Um, but that's not something that will happen overnight, right? So this is something. This is a project that would take place. Um, I think what they estimated was ten years. Okay, and so because that engineering project is occurring over ten years, you know the value of money can be changed uh, can change over that time, right? And so the money that basically the engineering college is going to spend on the you know the building renovation, you know they can take that money and invest it somewhere else and then have it grow. Okay. And so a lot of engineering economics and a lot of economic analysis is, is deciding, you know, what's kind of the best use of our money today, right? And so, you know, should we invest in this engineering project here? Should we invest in this engineering project? What's the interest rate that we're going to get? What's the rate of return, right? Um, or should we invest it, you know, in, in, uh, in stocks, right? And so these are kind of the constant amount of decision making that, you know, engineering managers and, and businesses have to account for, you know, when they're choosing which projects to undertake and which um, you know, um, which, which, um, which equipment to buy, okay? All right. And so, you know, if we go back to our previous um, example here, you know, with this cash flow table, you know, we can't simply just add up all the costs and say that, you know, the amount of money that we're gonna spend on this is just 80,000 plus 9,000 times six, right? Um, that's not, that's, that's, that, would, that would be erroneous because, you know, um, because, you know, because this project is planned to take place over six years, you know, due to interest rates and due to, you know, how the way money works, you know, the value of, of that $9,000 is going to change every single year, okay? And that's something that you always have to take into account when you're, uh, when you're doing engineering economics, okay? All right, uh, any, uh, any final questions on this before we, we wrap it up for the week? Okay. All right. So that's all I had planned for today. So, uh, so thank you guys for coming um, today. Um, and so um, I, I, I have the, I almost have the homework one ready. And so I think I'm going to try to post that sometime later today or tomorrow. Um, and that's going to be due um, beginning of week three. So not next week, but the week after that. Okay. All right. So have a great weekend, everyone. Um, you know, hope, hope everyone stays safe and I'll see you guys on, um, on Tuesday. Thank have you, a good day, professor. Thanks to you guys too. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. What's up? For the cash flow, does the trade involve benefits or is it non-existent? Um, would you say the, the trade? Yeah, trade. Uh, which trade? Was it on, on this example or, or later on? No, I just thought of it randomly. Trade? Uh, or what, do you, what do you mean by, by trade? Exactly. Like if you're trading like, I don't know, Funko Pops, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, like it'll have more costs later than now. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that gets a little bit more on kind of the economic side. And so, um, yeah. And so for those, for those kinds of problems, you know, we'll, we'll learn this later on. Um, you know, you have to kind of compute kind of the present worth of, of certain kinds of investments, right? Um, and so if you think about, you know, what's, how much is this, um, you know, object or how much is this, you know, asset worth today, if I'm going to trade that with someone, you know, I want to trade for something of, of equal or greater, you know, present, present worth value. Um, and so you have to kind of think, you know, how much is this going to be worth in the future and then to kind of transfer that to the present day. And so it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's complicated. So I, I don't want to get too much into it now because it's, you know, that's going to be the subject of the next few weeks. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting talk to, to have. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. Take care. Thanks. Right, thank you, too. Professor. Goodbye. Thanks. All right, Danny, your question is, uh, could the $100 ever lose value if, it, you, if you invested it wrong? Yes, um, it definitely can. Um, but generally, you can, you can kind of assume that, um, you know, it, as long as you're managing it, you know, well, um, and you're not, you know, and you're not doing stuff like penny stocks or anything like that, generally your money will grow, right? Even, even in kind of the very simplest case, like if you, if you take your money and just stick it into like a, like a, like a savings account, right? Something super safe, you know, with the bank, right? And so the, the bank is going to offer you an interest rate for, for that savings account too, right? It might be something like 0.01%, like, but it is going to grow over time. And so generally, generally we, we assume that we have positive interest rates. 
Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, uh, one question. Do we have, so we don't have the homework, right? Other than just the email thing that I already did? Yeah, yeah, so just, just the email thing. So I, I'm, I'm still working on the first homework um, assignment. I don't want to assign it yet because it has a lot to do with this stuff. And so oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I want to go over some examples in the class and then and then I'll, I'll post it. All right, and then a uh, question with regards to our test format, is it going to be the same way like you did in fluids or is it going to be different? So it'll be it'll be a timed exam. And so I'm, I'm not doing the 24 hour exams oh, okay. um, yeah. anymore, but it'll take place over Zoom. And so I'll, I'll put I'll put the exam on to Canvas and you just answer all the questions there. Oh. Um, it'll, it'll just be time for 90 minutes instead of 24 hours. All right, sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, Isaac, your question is uh, um, waitlisted students. Yeah, so um, so the class the class is already at 40, and so I, I was only planning on, on on increasing the capacity by about two or three. Um, and so if you're two or three on the waitlist, um, probably the beginning of next week, you can expect to be added to the class. Um, but if you're beyond that, you know, I would I would recommend that you enroll in the in the other section. Yeah, 40 is already kind of a lot. And so I, I don't want to take, you know, too much more than, than that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. 